Good morning, uh, folks, and th thanks for attending this uh, news conference. Uh, the reason I'm here today is to talk to you about three specific home invasions that give the Toronto Police concern. These three uh, specific home invasions occurred within the last week, the first one commencing last Friday on the 10th of August. Uh, my purpose is, number one, for public awareness and public safety. I want to ensure the public is aware of what is happening with these home invasions and how to become vigilant and to protect themselves and make good decisions. Number two, I'm hoping that with the media's assistance that we may reach out to some individuals that may have information on who caused these home invasions and who's responsible for them so we can follow up on leads, hopefully through media coverage, crime stoppers, or from the public. I'll go over the home invasions briefly. Um, on Friday the 10th of August, the first home invasion occurred in 32 Division in the area of Young and Shepherd. It was shortly after 10 in the morning in a residential neighborhood where a, a lady, a 49-year-old victim, answered the door. There was two males dressed in blue coveralls, described as male whites. Their faces were bare. They indicated that there was a smell of gas, indicating that they were from a gas company. The, uh, the young lady uh, let the, uh, the individual into the house where they immediately pulled out a firearm and a taser and put her to the ground along with her husband, who was uh, 47 years of age. The individuals uh, zip-tied the two victims, ha hands and ankles, and they ransacked the house looking for cash and jewelry. They did leave with some jewelry, cash, and identification. They also left with a 2010 gray BMW X3, similar to the one that's posted on the photo here. That vehicle is still outstanding. It has a license plate of AJJJ624. The victims in this uh, home invasion were not, uh, were not injured but they were left uh, tied up for a significant amount of time before the police arrived. Again, we're looking for any assistance we can to locate the individuals responsible for this. We also want to ensure that the public's aware that uh, they should be checking for identification and ensuring who they're opening the door to before they allow strangers in. On Sunday, the second home invasion, on Sunday the 12th of August, approximately 3 p.m., in a residential neighborhood of Shepherd and Nielsen Road on Parcel Square, a family was at home. At that time, two males slid their sliding glass screen open from their patio door and entered into the premises. The members were watching TV. This was a, a husband and wife and their three-year-old child. All three of the individuals were bound by phone cord or computer cord and duct tape. The mother and the father were also had duct tape placed over their mouths so they could not scream. The individuals uh, threatened to kill the three-year-old child if they did not comply and they made a demand for yellow jewelry during the robbery. The individuals in this robbery were both described as male white in their 30s, one taller, one shorter. The shorter one has a heavier build, the taller one was a slimming build. Both these individuals wore latex type gloves and masks concealing their face. The third, uh, the third robbery occurred on Tuesday, the 14th of August at 1.30 p.m. in the afternoon at 25 uh, Cougar Court, which is the Markham and Eglinton area. It's a high-rise building. The individuals were at home at this, uh, this time. It was a grandmother and her son. Uh, the individuals, uh, we believe, had a key or a bump key for the premises which is common in, uh, for some of the previous break and enter occurrences that we've investigated in the past over the years. These individuals went into the premises. There was no weapons seen. The individuals, again, tied up the, the uh, male and female victim. They assaulted them with their fists. They covered their, uh, they covered their faces. They believed that the, uh, the, the bandits, the three of them, individuals, were in the premises for approximately an hour ransacking the premises looking for jewelry and money. They made demands of that. Our investigation has uh, identified this individual uh, on the screen from an elevator shot and a, uh, a building shot as one of the people that is responsible for this home invasion. We believe that the individuals that, co that uh, committed this crime 
were aware of the cameras in the building. The individuals tried to conceal themselves throughout the building where there's video cameras and also tried to avoid the video cameras. This individual was caught on camera. We're looking for the public's assistance in trying to identify who he is so we can apprehend him. The individuals were described as all male black young individuals. This individual is wearing dark clothing. One of the individuals is wearing a white kurta over top of some dark clothing. But their faces were not recognizable during the home invasion because they were wearing disguises. The Toronto Police concern is all three of these home invasions occurred within the last week, all in the middle of the day, all while people are at home. So we want to make sure the public that reside in the area of these home invasions are aware of what's taking place. We want the public to under understand that they should be vigilant if you see strangers in neighbors' backyards to contact the police, strangers with faces disguised in, in hallways to contact the police. And if there's anybody out in the public that has any information on any of these three home invasions, to please contact Crime Stoppers of the Toronto Police. Questions? Do you think that any of them are connected? There is so many dissimilarities between these home invasions that at this point in time, they, don't not seem to be, they do not seem to be connected whatsoever, and there doesn't seem to be any reason to be targeting these individuals. They're not what we believe to be victims of circumstances. They don't seem to be uh, people that are involved in criminal activity. Uh, they seem to be, for all intents and purposes, uh, just normal individuals that go about their business and were targeted by these bandits. Is this like a spike in the amount of home invasions where we've seen brutal assaults and, you know, from year to date, last year, this year, or is this kind of on par with what we would expect? Our home invasions compared, the Hold Up Squad uh, investigates all home invasions with weapons and right now we are at the same number of home invasions this year as we were last year uh, and that's approximately uh, 53. I don't think, because there are so many dissimilarities, you don't think that they're connected as in the same people behind them, but is it possible they're all working for the same group or gang? Well, there's, there's a stream of possibilities, but the, the, the MOs are so, other than that it's, it's during daylight hours in residential homes, there's so many different similarities and descriptions with the faces covered, not covered, um, different, different in description being male black for some, male white for others, age difference. So there is some huge discrepancies in descriptions between them to, to link them. Uh, and there's also some things I'm not telling you about that, that in what they say and what they're making their demands. But for three home invasions in a week uh, where the individuals are, the bandits are actually zip tying and duct taping the victims, it's, it, to me that's very unusual. And so we want to bring it to the public's attention to be sure they're vigilant around what's going on around them. So more of an indication that these criminals are, are becoming more bold? Well, in the last week they certainly have. Any other questions? So what would you say then to, uh, to homeowners? You, you said a lot of things were happening while people are at home in the middle of the day. What would you say to homeowners uh, who may be opening the door when somebody knocks and presenting themselves as uh, somebody who may be trustworthy? Well, I think in, in that case, in, in the first instance, is, is get proper identification before you open the door to any stranger. Much the same thing we tell our children. It still applies when you're an adult. If, if you're not sure who you're opening the door to, don't open the door. Ask for identification, ensure that these individuals are bona fide before you let them into your house. And for the other home invasion, the, the second one, when you have individuals walking through your backyard, or a neighbor's backyard, it's, this goes out to the neighbors also. If you see something suspicious, contact the police. It's, it's always better to contact the police immediately and let them investigate some suspicious activity than try and say, yeah, I remember seeing that two days ago and that's trying to follow it up. If we can get there while the, the act is occurring or just after it occurred because of vigilant neighbors seeing suspicious activity in their neighborhood, it, it benefits everyone. It keeps everybody looking after everyone in their, in their neighborhood. The last time we spoke, there hadn't been any tips that had come in. That was earlier this week. Have there been tips that have come in since that have led you guys to anything of substance or value? Uh, nothing at this point in time. Again, that's my second portion for the reason for the media release is to see if we can generate some tips 
uh, or get somebody to call Crime Stoppers or the Holdup Squad to, to advise us who these individuals are or lead us, point us in the right direction. The vehicle that was taken, um, did, did these uh, robbers, were they able to manage to get away with a substantial amount of items from these homes? They, uh, my understanding, the first, the two, first two home invasions I described, they did receive uh, jewelry and cash, but I wouldn't call it substantial amount for, for the terror they're putting into the, to the, the victims. Uh, I wouldn't call it that substantial at all. The vehicle is probably worth more than anything that they've taken in the house. Just a clarification, in all three incidents, were there firearms or was that only in the first two? First two. The first one had a firearm and a taser and the second one had a firearm and the third one had, uh, had no weapons whatsoever, which in my investigative hunch believes that, uh, that these guys may uh, be committing break and enters in the neighbourhood just because of the way they entered the premises. We've had rashes over the years up and down where, where individuals managed to either steal keys or get bump keys and try and break into places and maybe they didn't realize that uh, these, uh, the victims were home at the time. That could be a, and, and it just turned into a home invasion from a break and enter. Does it look like they're, uh, you said maybe they don't realize they're home at the time, but they come, they come with something to tie people up with? Do they come with the duct tape? Do, are they prepared that way? Yes, in somewhat they are prepared that way. But uh, again, they, they, they may very well be prepared for the un, unexpected. In the Cougar Court incident, you said it was a grandmother and son? Grand, grandson. A grandmother and grandson. Yes. Any ages that you can give us there? 64-year-old uh, grandmother and a 23-year-old grandson. Any other questions? And again, in that last one, were they tied up? Yes. They were. With duct tape? Uh, yes. Do you typically see a spike this time of year? No, uh, I, I don't think actually, uh, in, historically in the last uh, several years, the, uh, the robberies have gone down in uh, July and August a little bit. So, uh, so really these are, are random home invasions that, that look like the, the suspects were, were targeting specifically these homes or just uh, happen to be that's the one that got the doors open? We have no reason to believe that they were targeted for any other purpose than the actual robbery itself. Uh, and how they were selected, these homes, we have no idea. And uh, again, maybe the public can help us with that. How often do you see random home invasions? Normally they're, they're targeted for a reason. How often do you see this? Here? Very uh, low percentage is, is uh, a random home invasion. As you say, most of them are victim of circumstances, as I call it. Uh, they're targeted for a reason. These individuals, uh, these victims don't seem to be have any reason to be targeted at this point in time. Obviously the investigation can take a turn at any given time. Just for, you know, when you've got, it's a hot summer, people are going to leave their screen doors open and that sort of thing. This could have just happened to anyone who left their door unlocked. I mean, is it realistic to ask people to ask for ID or should they keep their doors locked despite, you know, just trying to get some air in? Well, that's two different home invasions you're, you're crossing over. The first one was an actual knock on the door and they're pretending to be consumers gas guys or, or something similar. The second one with the home invasion with the sliding door, yeah, people are going to have their doors open in the heat of the summer. What I'm suggesting is if there's neighbors that see suspicious people walking in between houses or you see somebody in your neighbor's backyard that don't, don't belong there, don't hesitate to call the police. It could happen to anyone. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. This conference is not concluded. You'll be able to find the images of one of the suspects and as well as the vehicle still on the TPS website next 20 to 30 minutes.